Okay, hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be doing an integration uh, question that was on the Cambridge Integration Bee this year that I just thought was lovely. It uses all sorts of really nice techniques and interesting ways of thinking. So let's just jump straight into it. It's the integral from negative 1 to 1 of sine root x over sinh root x plus sine root x. And this is a really interesting problem because firstly, we're integrating from minus 1 to 1 but we're taking the square root. So straight away we know there's something odd going on because we're allegedly square rooting negative numbers but of course that's going to introduce complex numbers into the mix that we don't really want. Um, and so generally we want to split this up uh, into the integral from negative 1 to 0 of sine root x over sinh root x plus sine root x plus the integral from 0 to 1 of sine root x over sinh root x plus sine root x. And this part we're going to ignore for now because the thing that's really interesting is this part over here, the integral from negative 1 to 0. Now we know that the square root of negative x is equal to i times the square root of x. So why don't we make that substitution? Let's say we're going to let u equal negative x, of course meaning that du is equal to negative dx and our bounds become 1 and 0. So we end up with negative the integral from 1 to 0, but of course I'm going to use that negative to flip our bounds, 0 to 1, of sine of i root x divided by sinh of i root x plus sine of i root x with respect to x. And some of you may have kind of spotted this when I mentioned i, but whenever you see i being inputted into sine or sinh, we should start thinking about the relationship between those two functions, because sine x is e to the i x minus e to the minus i x over 2i, and sinh x is e to the x minus e to the minus x over 2. So we can come up with all sorts of interesting relationships between these two using complex numbers. First thing we can imagine is, what if we plugged an i into sine x? Well, we'd end up with a negative x as an exponent here, we'd end up with a positive x as an exponent here. And so if we multiply by i, and then we multiplied by a negative, just to flip the order of our exponents, then we would end up with sinh x. So that's our first identity, it's that negative i sine ix equals sinh x, or this can be even more nicely expressed if we multiply by i on both sides, as saying that sine of ix equals i of sinh x. And similarly there's another identity that says the same but the opposite, that sinh of ix is equal to i of sine x, and I'm not going to verify that now, but that's something you can nicely verify for yourself. It's essentially the exact same method as what we just did. So we can rewrite this integral as the integral from 0 to 1 of i sinh x, sorry, root x, over i sine root x plus i sinh root x with respect to x. And as if by magic, our i's all cancel out. So we've, we've removed the need to worry about this imaginary part of our integral. And we're back to dealing with something real. But let's not forget that we've separated this op, off from a larger um, sum. The integral that we're looking to evaluate, the integral i, is equal to this integral plus the integral from 0 to 1 of sine root x over sinh root x plus sine root x and this is where the magic happens because when we add this integral to this integral our integrand becomes sine root x plus sinh root x over sine root x plus sinh root x which of course simplifies to 1. So this means that our i is equal to just the integral from 0 to 1 of 1 with respect to x, which is of course just equal to 1. 
and I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. It's one of these nice integrals that has a neat little trick to it, and uh, yeah. So this is the second video in our series of saying thank you for 5,000 subscribers, and I hope you're looking forward to more coming soon. Bye.